Hi folks, I welcome you all for this wonderful session. I'm very happy meeting you people right now. If you're watching to this video, this happens because of Sri Chaitanya Educational Institution. For the past these many years of my career, I've been a part of a lot of other educational institutions as well. And Sri Chaitanya Educational Institution is one of the best educational institutions I've ever come across in my life. You people know what I'm talking about. We are going through a lockdown situation. Almost all the education institutions have been quarantined, but still your education institution is finding its own way to meet you people, give you education and share knowledge. And they are going out of the way to get the best resource people on this world to educate your people. And this is appreciable and I thank for this wonderful things happening. Everyone have a lot of expectation. We do everything out of expectation. I am talking to you people, expecting you people to listen to me. You are listening to me, expecting some takeaway from this video. Whatever we do, we do it out of an expectation. And you know what? The expectation turned to be a success. What you expect from something to be successful. Whatever you do, you want to be successful out of that. You start from your house, you want to reach a place and that process is successful. You're expecting to reach that place and you'll be successful in that. And that is how we live and that is how we do. We expect success in everything what we do. We expect ourselves to be successful. The million dollar question is how to be successful. What we want to discuss in this particular video is why people be successful and why people be unsuccessful. Is that being successful is such a difficult task or failing is such an easy one? Let me talk to you people right now. Listen to me carefully. There are three things that directly affect your success. Three things that can directly affect your success. And the number one is attitude. Number two is belief. And number three is discipline. Number one is attitude, number two is belief, and number three is discipline. When you talk about attitude, attitude is the expression of your character. No matter what your character is, but people don't see what your character is. People see what you act, how you react to something, how you do things, and that happens to be your attitude. How do you dress up? How do you walk? Everything others observe from you. That happens to be your attitude. Most of the time, when I counsel students, they have a question, they have a query, they have a problem. You know what's the problem the kids come up with to me? They most of the time they say their silver, I want to be this. This is my goal and this is my dream. But whereas my parents want to be the other one, my parents want me something else, my parents putting their dream into me, all this stuff. One answer what I give to those kids is very simple, is right here. Your parents are afraid of your future. Your parents are afraid of your future. Why do you think your parents put their thoughts on you? Why do you think your parents want you to be something else and not what you want to be? Because your attitude is not proper. Your attitude is not good. Please don't mistake me. I'm not talking about how you behave with them. No, that's not the attitude what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your attitude towards your goal. I'm talking about your attitude towards your success. I'm talking about your attitude towards your dream. Just imagine if you're not serious about your goal, if you're not serious about your dream, if you're not serious about your own success, how can you be successful? How can you achieve your goal? How can you achieve your dream? Your parents have not seen you being serious about your goal. Your parents have not seen you being serious about your dream. Your parents have not seen you being serious about your success. If your parents got to know that you're not serious about what you want to be, definitely they will put their ideas in you. That's what is happening in your life. If your parents are not supporting you in what you want to be, it means your attitude is not good towards your success. Your parents have not seen a proper attitude from you. That is what attitude I mean. It's the process, what others see. I can understand you may think about your dream all the time. You can talk about your dream all the time. 
you can keep doing dreaming about your uh, goal all the time but are you putting something in action what is your attitude towards that are the people saying something in it are your parents saying something from you or your teacher saying something from you that happens to be your attitude if your parents see something positive towards what you're doing towards your goal what you do then definitely you will get support from your fair family definitely you'll get support from your parents you got a point just imagine your goal is to become a musician and your parents want you to be a doctor your goal is to become a sports person and your parents want you to be an engineer because your parents have never seen you being very serious about the dream of being a sports person if you wake up every day in the morning if you are very serious about your dream and you're working out hard on it and your parents see you being serious about your dream definitely they'll support you to be one you got a point that is the attitude i am talking about that is the attitude i'm talking about please ask this question to yourself what is your attitude towards your goal what is your attitude towards your dream what is your attitude towards your success and the second one is belief belief the question is not as just like this do you believe yourself all this stuff you know what there is a very familiar quote i want to share with you people if you believe you can you are correct if you believe you cannot still you are correct because what you believe is what is going to happen what you believe is what is going to happen i want to tell you people it's not just like you believe that you can do it no there are set of beliefs what you have to break as well for the past these many years of your life your life have taught a lot of things to you for the past these many years of your life you might have come across lot of situations in your life you might have come across lot of people in your life every single people you come across they have taught a lesson to you every single individual you come across they have taught a lot of lesson to you every lesson carries a lot of belief your friends make you to believe something your parents make you to believe something your city with your failures make you to believe something there are a lot of beliefs in your life that is holding you back there are a lot of beliefs in your life that is not allowing you to be successful there are a lot of beliefs in your life that is not allowing you to put the best in whatever you have to you want to i request you people to break the belief today break it right now break it right now let me tell you a secret you know what your friend sitting next to you inside a classroom have a frame about you they have a belief about you this is what this person is your parents have a frame about you this is what my son is this is what my daughter is your teachers have a frame about you this is what this particular student is your society have a frame about you your relatives your cousin your grandparents have a frame about you they have a belief about you you know what break the belief they may think that few things are not possible to you go ahead and try it out break their belief this is a secret how you can become a role model to your society your friends are looking at you like a friend if you want your friend to look up to you if you want your friend to take you as their own role model the very simple step what you have to do is understand what that person is thinking about you according to that person what you are break the belief if you break this belief definitely you'll be praised by your friends if you break their belief definitely you'll become a role model to your friends they they start look up and look up to you people you got a point yeah the second one is belief break the belief of the people around you and very interestingly i want you people to overcome the set of belief overcome the set of belief most of the students you know what i come across they believe lot of negative things though that is not true they believe like that they come to me they communicate in a very good language but still they feel bad you know what i am not good in english that's a belief stopping you not to give you a 100 percentage good number of people have a belief that i am not looking good 
That's a belief stopping you to give you a hundred percentage. Break it. Most of the time, you're very conscious about what others think about you. Break this belief. Break this thought. Just come out of that. Just come out of that. No matter what others think about you, it's your life, it's your hard work, and you're going to be successful about that. Just think about the last thing. If you are successful, what others will think? That's all. In the process, no matter what others think about you, no matter what others talk about you, if you are successful, what others will think about you? If you achieve your goal, what others will talk about you? That is what should run in your mind. In the process, let them talk anything about you. In the process of being successful, let them think anything about you. Please don't mind. Break the belief and come out of that. The third one, what I want to share with you people is discipline. This is not the discipline what your teacher is talking to you about. This is not the discipline what your parents talking to you people about. No, this is different. This is a routine. A routine. What you people do every single day. A routine. Just imagine if you want to be a sports person, you have to maintain a set of discipline. I said no. Every day you wake up early in the morning and you go for a walk or jog or whatever. If you are a person not waking up early in the morning, you may find your own time to do a walk or jog, you practice in the ground, playground or whatever. Certain hours for a day, you practice as a sports person. Discipline. Your diet will change. The food diet, what you eat will change. The way you dress will change. You have to be comfortable. You want to get into the dress which is tight to you or you want to get into the dress which sucks all the sweat from your body, whatever. Your shoes. Walking shoes, jogging shoes, anything will change. That is the discipline. That is the discipline. This is applicable not only for a sports person. This applies for everyone. What's your goal, dude? You want to become a doctor? You want to become an engineer? You want to become a space uh, scientist? You want to become a, a, what is it, a politician? You want to become a president? You want to become an actor? You want to become a musician or dancer or whatever? You have to follow a certain discipline. A certain routine are you following that routine is the question you got a point are you following that routine is the question every day continuously you have to stay in getting prepared to be that that is discipline don't expect your life to surprise you all of a sudden one day you cannot be what you want to be no your life cannot surprise you you have to be prepared for what you want to be that is the discipline that is the discipline. Be prepared for what you want to be. Every day you have to follow a routine of that particular person. Only then you can be that person one day in your life. Every day you have to follow a routine to be successful. Only then you can be successful in your life. Every day you have to follow your routine that can lead you towards your goal. Only then you can achieve your goal in your life. That is a discipline needed in your life. This is not the discipline about waking up on time, making your room tidy, or keeping your notebooks and classwork tidy. No, no, no. This is the routine, what you have to continuously con do repeatedly again and again, everyday basis to be successful one day. This is the discipline I'm talking about. Let me talk to you people about a couple of personalities who have been with a great attitude, belief and discipline and have been extremely successful in their life. Shall I? Yeah? Good. There was a lady who gave birth to a baby in the doorstep of the medical college. Not inside the hospital, not inside the medical college. Doorstep of the medical college. She was not rich enough to get admitted by herself for this delivery. And the medication for the delivery of the baby was done by the trainee nurse, the students of that medical college. And because of the bad medication, the baby which born was born with a partial facial paralysis. Let me repeat myself, partial facial paralysis. Partial means one part of the facial is the face. Paralysis, one part of the child's face will not work. The neural system is not connected with that. Yeah, and that boy baby grown up with a dream. The dream of that kid is to become a superstar. Is to become a superstar. This baby grown up and one part of the, it's completely one part of his, uh, I mean mouth that will be drooped down, face is drooped down. One part of his mouth, he, cannot, he can't chew, uh, he can't feel any taste and that's how he grew up. 
and the way he talk also will be disturbed. He cannot talk like a normal person. He drop like an I person, like uh, uh, I want to become a superstar. That's how he speaks. He can't even speak properly. He grew up with a dream. The dream of this kid is to become a superstar. He grew up with this dream. And he started searching for a chance to become a superstar, to become an actor, to become an actor. And he took part in a couple of uh, stage shows and dramas and other stuff. But that's not his dream. His dream is to become a superstar. And over a point of time, he got married as well. He got married and still he kept chasing for chances. He never got a chance. And he has a dog, a pet dog. He loves his dog a lot. It happens for him to sell his dog not because he wants money because he was not able to feed his dog that pathetic his condition was he sold this dog just for 50 dollars to take care of his dog and he grew up with this particular dream every day every time every place where he go and ask for a chance with producers with directors to be an actor every single person whom he approaches to get a chance have gave him one single word as an answer you know what's that have you ever seen your face on the mirror? Have you ever seen your face on the mirror? But he never gave up. He never gave up. He continued doing this again and again. One day it happens for him to see a boxing match. And that was a boxing match between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Vetna. And that boxing match is a very important match in the entire history of boxing history. It happens for this person, this man, to watch this boxing match, the boxing match between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Webna. Muhammad Ali in default a champion that time. Chuck Webna was not such a great boxer that time. People know that Muhammad Ali will win this series. People, all the people who gathered have come there to see the skills of Muhammad Ali, not to see who is winning this match. And the match started. Round one went on, round two went on, round three went on. Chuck Webna got beaten up by Muhammad Ali. All the people enjoying the match. Rounds went on. Round seven went on. Chuck Webna was got beaten up by Muhammad Ali. It started beating in Chuck Webna's face. People thought, the crowd thought Chuck, Chuck Webna will be knocked down in this round. He came back for the eighth round. He withstood the 8th round. He came back for the ninth round. He withstood the ninth round. Boxing matches used to be 15 rounds those days and 10 rounds nowadays. Somehow the match went up to 13 rounds. Chuck Webner's face is completely bloody and it was not, he cannot recognize who is the person, the other person fighting against uh, Muhammad Ali. He came back. He stood the entire round. He came back for the 14th round. People thought at least by this round he'll be knocked out. But he came back for 15th round. He stood that entire 15 rounds. However, Muhammad Ali won that boxing match. But still, people started praising Chuck Webner because he never gave up. He came back and he fought back Muhammad Ali all the 15 rounds. Next day, all the newspaper was talking about Chuck Webner in a great way. It happens for this boy who grew up with the dream of becoming a superstar. He watched this entire match. He went back home, he shut his door, he sat in a place for 72 hours continuously and he wrote a script. He wrote a story. He took that script, he went out and he started asking chance with that particular script. He went and he met all the directors he know and he gave them the story. People went through. Some of them said it's a boxing story. It is very good. Some of them said boxing matches happening everywhere. Who will sit and watch a movie about boxing? boxing but the people who said the, the movies the script is really good they want the script but not him people ask him like this okay how much would i pay for the script he said i can give the script for free but the only condition is i want to act in that movie i want to be the main role in this movie i want to be a hero of that movie people said no and finally he met one particular director whom he believes a lot and that director bargained him for $50,000. He said, I'll pay $50,000 for this particular script. Give me the script. This man said, I am here to sell my script, not my dream. 
He asked him, what's your dream? He said, I want to be an actor in this movie. He said, I will play one lakh dollars. You don't act in this movie. I'll give you one lakh dollars. You don't act in this movie. But still, he said the same thing. No, I'm here to sell my script, not my dream. He took away the script. He walked out of the room. He was about to leave that place. This director is seeing this person for a long time. He's seeing his attitude for a long time. He's very serious about what is he doing. He's very serious about that. So he, the moment when he's about to leave the room, he stopped it and he asked this question, Hey, what is the last thing you want? What, when will you give the story? What's your dream? And this boy turned to him and said, I want to become a superstar. This director saw his attitude. This director saw his belief. This director saw his discipline. And finally he came to a conclusion. You know what he said? I will give you one million dollars. You have to produce the movie. You act in that movie. You take your salary. You have to find casting. You have to do everything. You, you shoot this movie, movie by yourself. And you release the movie. The moment you release the movie, the first money, what you get, have to be paid to back, back to me. The first one million dollar will be mine. And the rest of the things you take. This is the help I can do to you. He was very happy. He took that one million dollar from the director, producer. And then he took $30,000 for himself. As, as a payment for his for the movie and then he took all the castings inside and the first thing what he did he ran back to the dog owner to whom he sold the dog and he wants to get the dog back he spoke to him and said that no matter what I'll pay you $50 back and I want my dog back and the dog owner said no I love this dog a lot now I'm not ready to give you back and he started like I'll give you $100 now I want the dog back he said no he kept giving a lot of other reasons for not giving the dog back and finally, he got the dog back for $15,000 from the dog owner with the condition. You know what's the condition? The dog owner said, I know you have money now. I read the newspaper today morning and I know you're also going to direct a movie. And I will give you the dog back if at all you agree giving me a character to act in that particular movie. He gave that to the dog person also. And he got the dog back he started directing that movie and then he released the movie within a one day's time people called him as a superstar of Hollywood you know whom I'm talking about I'm talking about Sylvester Stallone the person the hero of Rocky movie all the seven parts I'm talking about Rocky I'm talking about the hero of Rambo movie I'm talking about the one of the hero of Avengers, Incredibles, I'm sorry, you got a point, Rocky, the person I'm talking about, just check his attitude, he was very serious about what he is doing, his entire family saw his attitude, all the directors saw his attitude, he was very serious about what is he doing, very serious about what is he doing, you saw his belief, you saw his belief, the people in the industry, the people in the cinema industry ask him to go see your face at least once on the mirror. You can never be an actor. You can never be an actor. He believed his talent. He believed that he can be one of the best, not only the best, he, he believes that he can be the superstar of Hollywood. His discipline. The moment he decided to take a movie about boxing, that can happen anyway, but he continuously learned boxing he did a lot of exercises he repeated it he was routine this is lifestyle change routinely he did a lot of things to make that particular boxing movie and make it as a blockbuster attitude belief and discipline can change your life anyway can change your life anyway from nowhere he becomes a superstar of Hollywood within a single day and what plays a major role is his attitude, his belief and discipline. I want to share with you people about one more personality. A couple who have 22 children have named their 20th child as Wilma. When Wilma was born, she had been a victim of almost all the diseases possible. And when she grew up, their parents found that her leg in a different shape. 
she was taken to the hospital and then they got to know that the child was affected by polio. When the doctor declared that she cannot walk on her own, it was very difficult for her parents to take it and her mother refused to believe that. Wilma was taken to the hospital every single day by her mother. She took her hospital, different doctors for some set of treatment, begging them to help her child out to walk on her own. When she was eight to nine years old, one caring doctor designed a metal braces for Wilma for her leg, a braces and a shoe, with which she can walk or stand on her on herself. For the first time, when she wear the metal braces and she walk, rather feeling good, Wilma felt bad. She felt that there's something else is supporting her to stand, something else is supporting her to helping her how to walk, and which she don't like to be. When she was 11 years old, for the first time, Wilma, Wilma was left alone by her mother to go out and play with her friends. That's the first time she removed the metal braces and she was checking out what she can do. And she was checking out what she can do with her friends. She can play, walk, stand or walk, whatever. And that's the first time she removed and threw away the metal braces and she started walking. She fell down many times. This was not easy for her to take over. She fell down many times. She fell over many times, but she never stopped there. She took herself again and kept walking. And she felt rather walking. She falls down within a single step. But when she runs, she can go for two or three steps further. And then she falls and then she picks herself. And she felt good running rather standing and walking. She kept trying this every single day. She kept trying this every single day. She come out of the house in the absence of her parents. She removes the braces and she wants to stand, run and walk by herself. She kept doing it every single day. And over a point of time, the span of standing, the time span of running improved, increased. And when she was 13 years old, she wants to be a part of a basketball team. And she went to a place and she started observing people out there playing basketball. For three years, continuously, she was just allowed to observe how others are walking. All the time she observed the game, she observed others' leg, how they run, how they walk, how they jump, how they do things, all this stuff. And somehow, the basketball coach asked her to be a part of the team. One day, for the practice, she went to the court 30 minutes late. Wilma was asked to run across the ground 30 times, 30 rounds across the ground. According to the co-players, according to the coach, that may be a punishment. But this changed Wilma's life. She got a very good chance to run that far. She started running. She started running. She was very happy all running all the 30 rounds in that particular ground. She ran, she ran and she ran. Every single round she runs and she become better and better and better running that day. She felt very happy that particular day. She could do this. The other coach in the same court found her, she adopted her and it happens for her. When she was 16 years old, she was a part of the first 150 meters relay and she won it. And she had been a part of the athlete team from there. By the year 1956, she was a part of Olympics and she won bronze in relay. Thirst for winning have never stopped there. Thirst for winning have never stopped there. The next Olympic by the 1960, she won three gold medals as an athlete in track event. That is where Wilma's golden career started. You know what folks? From a person who cannot stand to an athlete who can won a gold medal in the Olympic. This happens in Wilma Rodolph's life. Just check her attitude. Just check the belief. Just check the discipline. This is what I want to talk with you people about. From a polio attacked person to a Olympics gold medalist. If her attitude can do this, if her belief can do this, if her discipline can do this, what that could do in your life? What that could do in your life, that is what I want to talk with you people about. What that could do in your life, just look at Wilma Rodolph's attitude towards polio. Look at Wilma Rodolph's attitude towards the metal braces. 
Look at Wilma Rudolph's attitude towards punishment. Look at Wilma Rudolph's belief. The entire world believe that she can't. In one of her interviews, she said this. Doctor said, I cannot walk. My mother said, I will definitely walk. I believed my mother. It's not about the person. It's about the thought. It's about the belief. According to her, she found her mother as a positive person. Mother's belief, mother's thought positive. She thinks positive. She thought, she believes that she can walk one day. That happens to be true. The discipline watching. You are giving a lot of excuses. I know most of us, most of the students especially, we enjoy our weaknesses. You enjoy being lazy. We enjoy our disabilities. I'm not able to study. And you're happy about that. In front of others, you say, no, I'm not able to study. I'm not able to focus. I'm not able to sit. I'm not able to write faster. I'm not able to walk. I'm not able to sit in my class and listen. Whatever. Are you enjoying your weaknesses? You want to give this as an excuse? How many more years? How many more years? You want to give this as an excuse? How many more years? If you want to achieve something out of it, maintain a discipline. Mental discipline. Just go ahead. She went out of the way. She believed herself. She had a very good attitude about her negative life. She had a very positive attitude about whatever happens around her. And she had a very good discipline. That happens. That makes her to be the golden lady of this planet. Within the first Olympics in her life, she becomes the national hero. From no one knows just a girl from a village that to a victim of polio she becomes a national hero this is the attitude and belief and this discipline i'm talking about compared to these set of people you people have much more facilities than them yes or no your parents are getting you whatever you want and you're ex and they're extending their support up to any level and if you are watching this video I know what kind of facility you have. Just imagine what kind of a result you must produce. What kind of an attitude you should carry. What kind of a belief you should have. What kind of a discipline you should follow. What kind of a person you must be. Everything starts from how do you see yourself. How do you see yourself is the question. Everything starts from how do you see yourself. See, want, do, get. This is the secret of success. Why people be successful? Because of these four things. Why people fail? Because of these things. See, do, want, get. What do you see? Is what you do. What do you do? Is what you want. What you want is what you get. How do you see yourself? You have a choice to see yourself as a loser. If you see yourself as a loser, what you do? What the losers do? If you do what the loser, what you want? What the losers want? If you want what the loser, what you get? What the losers get? Instead, you can see yourself as a doctor. You have a choice to see yourself as an IAS or an IPS officer. You have a choice to see yourself as a politician. You have a choice to see yourself as a president. You have a choice to see yourself as a sports personality. You have a choice to see yourself as a rock star. If you see yourself, then you do what they do. Altogether, let me call it as a champion. See yourself as a champion. If you see yourself as a champion, you do what the champions do. You do what the champions do. You want what the champions want. You want what the champions want. You get what the champions get. Everything starts from how do you see yourself. No matter what you are. No matter what is your age. How do you see yourself is what determines your life. Just forget what you are. Just forget your age. If you want to be a doctor, start looking at yourself as a doctor right now, from now onwards. If you want to be a sports personality, start looking at yourself as a sports personality from now onwards. 
If you want to be a CEO of a fortune company, start looking at yourself as one. If you start looking at yourself as one, only then you will do like that. When you do what they do, only then you actually want they want. Only then you actually get what they got. You got the point? Everything starts from how do you see yourself. I'm in 6th grade self, I'm in 10th grade self, I'm in intermediate self, I'm in college self, I'm a working self. And no matter what you do, you start looking at yourself as a person whom you want to be. You will definitely be one. You will definitely be one. That's how your lifestyle can change. That's how your lifestyle can change. That's how it can change. The nature will definitely bring you right there. If you, are a, if you think yourself as a doctor, if you think yourself as a space engineer, if you think yourself as a policeman, if you think yourself as a politician, if you think yourself as a CEO of a fortune company, if you think yourself as a president, just imagine, just imagine how your lifestyle will be. Will a person, will a doctor, will a president, will a police do this, will play games now, will roam with your friends, will party, will do what? The moment when you start seeing yourself like that person, your lifestyle changes. You want to be one day. Everything starts from how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Everything starts from there. Start seeing yourself as a person whom do you want to be. That is the secret of success. Okay, according to you people, what success is? Is to achieve your goal? You can be happy about that. I have a suggestion to you people. Your goal not necessarily should make you alone happy. Your goal can make the society happy. When that change into a vision. When that change into a vision. Just imagine you want to achieve your goal or you have a vision about something. I'll give you people difference between goal and the vision. I want to buy a Ferrari with two seated. That's my goal. And my family members are finding five, five of them in my family. And if I buy a Ferrari with two seated, me and my friend can travel. Rest of the people in my family. Do you think they'll be happy about it? Anyway, my goal is accomplished. My goal is accomplished. That cannot be my vision. If you have a vision, you can make the people around you happy. At this moment, you can make a decision that can change your goal into a vision. Your goal can get changed into a vision. You can be a doctor, works in this country or abroad. You can earn a lot of money. You can be a doctor who can build a hospital in this country or abroad. You can employ a lot of other doctors. That becomes a vision. You got a point? Just imagine if your goal turns into vision, what that can do. Think in a broader way. Think in a broader space. Your vision can change this world for better. Your vision can change the society for better. Your vision can be the solution of millions of people's problem. Your vision can bring smile in a lot of other faces. Your vision can do great things. Because your life is not just yours. A group of people struggling to make you happy right now. The dress what you're wearing right now was done by a group of people. The footwear what you're wearing right now was done by a group of people. The world is a chain of service. The world is a chain of service. Your service is pending. Change your goal into a vision. You can make the people around you happy. You can make the society happy. You can keep the rest of the world happy when your goal change into a vision. Please think in a broader space and have a proper vision. Have a proper vision that can change life. That can change life. I just want to tell you people this. Imagine your school, your institution was started with just 80 students with a vision of educating people, with a vision of bringing a smile in the rest of the parents' face, 
with the vision of giving proper education without any partialities, with the vision of educating the society. And today, they're educating almost 8 lakh students at a stretch. And I can't imagine how many of them have got passed out, how many of them yet to get passed out. This is what a vision can do. The world is the hierarchy, is a chain of service. And I just want to remember you, remain you about your service for spending. Change your goal into a wish. Change it into a wish. Yes, change it into a wish. You are gifted too. You are blessed. As you wake up in the morning, all the parts of your body is working properly for which you are gifted. You are listening to this video. You have some gadget on your hand for which you are gifted. You have a shelter to sit for which you are gifted. There are many other people don't have what you have. Your vision can get them what you have. Your vision can bring smile in their faces. Your vision can change this world as a better place to live. Forget the society, forget the world. You have people around you. I'm talking about your parents now. You have people around you. Your parents have served enough for you. As I said, chain of service. Your parents have served enough for you. And your service is pending for them. How do you want to call yourself? A person who achieves the goal or the person who achieves who have a vision? Don't you have a vision of bringing smile in your parents' face? Don't you have a vision of keeping your parents comfortable? Don't you have a vision of, your, of making your parents happy? Don't you have a vision of making your parents proud? Change your goal into a vision that can change the world, not only your life. Not only your life, that can change your world, not just your life. This is the best thing you people can take. Change your goal into a vision. There are millions of other people who don't have what you have. Feel good about yourself. Feel better about yourself. What are you going to do? Still you want to complain about something? Still you want to talk about what you don't have? Still you want to cry to your parents for asking something? Still you want to do that? A person's name, Rocky Robinson. Jackie Robinson. His name is Jackie Robinson. He is the first African American to be a part of NBA. That is the International Baseball League team. Every single time when he walks into the stadium to play, since he's an African American, people spit on him, throw their left out snacks and left out edibles, trash on him. Once it happens, he signed a contract to a club that he will not complain for people spitting on his face. What are you going to do? Are you going to complain? Jackie Robinson was a military person, army person. Jackie Robinson was the best footballer. Jackie Robinson was the best basketballer. Jackie Robinson have won a lot of gold medals before being a part of this basket baseball team. He signed a contract that he will not complain if people spit on his face. Check your life. Are you going to complain? You have a lot of good things in you. You have wonderful opportunity. Wonderful people around you. Stop complaining. Give your best. Give your best. Please check your attitude towards your life. Have a great belief. Continue the good discipline. This can change your life and make you successful. This can change your life and make you successful. If not you, then who okay. You have all the best. You just have to give it. You just have to give the best. You have all the best in you. You have all the abilities and capabilities in you. Have a proper attitude about what you have. Because people are crying for what you have. There are lots and lots of people who don't have what you have. You have everything but not the attitude. You have everything but not the belief. You have everything but not the discipline. If you have these three, you are something else, not, not what you are right now. 
you're something else, what you're not right now. Give your best. If not you, then who? It's your life, man. Have a great vision that can change the world for better. You are that one person who can change the world. It will not change by itself. You are that one person who can bring smile in a lot of people. You are that one person have a great vision about the society. You are that one person who can make people around you proud. You are that one person who is going to achieve what you want to be. Thanks for listening to me this far. At this particular opportunity, I take to thank and appreciate your educational director, Nasima, who have made all these things happening and all the many other things happening for you people. Thank you guys for listening to me so far. Thank you.